one. Good morning, podcast world. Uh, you're listening to Genuine. I'm Gonzo, and I'm here with my uh, lovely co-host, Ash. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Great, man. Really, really good. A lot of things happened this week, man. It was just yeah. full of stuff, not only at work, but also in in the world in general. I mean, we've got we've got a baby born, uh, you know, a royal baby was born this week. We yes. Had, we, we had, uh, basically, we had some hockey. You went out to dinner with uh, Olivia, and you went through. That was actually funny. So for those of you listening, Ash and I will actually circle back with each other at the beginning of the show. We'll kind of go over the topics. And we, when we, just before the show started, uh, we were talking about what, what each other was doing. Um, and I went out to dinner with some friends. And so you went out with dinner with the family, right? Yes. We went and to you, dinner last night. And, and you found yourself, tell the listeners, you found yourself in a very common situation when you are with the toddler. So yes. <laughs> go ahead. Tell the listeners what happened to you. Well, no. So we decided we were going to go to dinner. And where'd you go first of all? We went to Penne Pomodoro. Um, oh my God. <laughs> super good. But it's, it's very family friendly, which is fantastic. Um, we usually obviously try to do family friendly places when we're taking her, um, a it's easier on us and B it's fair to other patrons. I, right. I hate walking in somewhere and feeling like I'm ruining someone else's dinner because of my child. And we typically never have an issue. She is always been great. Um, usually have to bust out the iPad probably three fourths of the way through the meal, but she'll sit there and she'll engage. She'll color. She'll, She'll be a good watch. girl. She'll be people watching, whatnot. So we get yesterday, Fridays are always busier days for her because she has a long Mother's Day out that she goes to. And so she took a rock solid nap. Lance was coming home from playing golf. And I said, you know, what? I think we'll be good. She she took a really good nap. So we should be good to go. So we go, we sit down. <laughs> I immediately order her meal. So it comes out quick. Ask for bread. You know what I mean? Like try to yeah, keep yeah, things yeah, moving. Yeah. Entertainment, so, entertainment. So yeah. No boredom. Yep. So of course her meal comes, she starts scarfing it down and then her meal is finished and she thinks it's time to go. Right. It's like, well, I'm done. Right. So I don't want to sit around and wait for you guys. Exactly. Um, so at this point, our meal hasn't come yet. We have a bottle of wine that we've opened. And so Lance is like, okay, I'll just go walk her on the sidewalk outside just for a couple minutes, see if that helps. So <laughs> comes back in, a couple people stop by. Oh, she's so great. She's so great. She's so cute. So the sweet. I'm like, I keep, right like, I keep knocking on the, under the table, like knocking on wood. Please don't jinx this for us. <laughs> so he comes back in, puts her in the high chair. I think it lasts like five minutes. This goes on through the entire meal to where we left half the meal sitting on the table because yep. again, I refuse to be there with a toddler pitching a fit and other people right. having to listen to that. I've been in the, I've been there where I'm the patron and someone's doing that and the parent just doesn't even acknowledge it. And I'm like, come on. Like, well, that goes back to fair. the, it goes to the true. That goes back to the airplane story, but you have yes. a good point. It's, it's one of those things and with an airplane, you really like you're the, 30, you're in the air. You you're don't locked. have a choice, right, but right, at right. least, at in least try to do something. Exactly. But in a I restaurant, agree. you can pick up and leave. And so scarfed some of it down. And luckily we had, we had eaten enough to where it's not like we were like, oh, we got to get another meal when we get home. Right. But it was one of those things I was like, nope, not doing this. We're, <laughs> like this is going to lead to us fighting. And uh. <laughs> so then we get in the car and I put on her show and she starts singing. And I'm like, of course. <laughs> you want to you strangle the kid right there. I get it. <laughs> uh, how old is she? She's, she's going to be two. Twenty. Soon, right? She's 20 months. Okay. So let me tell you that when I, when Natalie and I first had our, you know, we had our first child, um, we, uh, we basically had the identical exact same experience. We went to this Italian restaurant in North Carolina. We were living in Durham at that time. And same thing happened. We sit down thinking that we're going to have a quiet, you know, we're going to have, Julian, who was two at the time, um, sit at a table, not enough pitch a fit. And we didn't have iPads back there. We had the little DVD, portable DVD. Right. <laughs> I mean, which were every DVD was scratched to the max and it would just jump and, or Skip. Get stuck, <laughs> and he would just get so frustrated. But this time around, 
we had had a fresh set of DVDs. I mean, these are brand spanking new and we're not, and we knew we could get through a meal and we committed the same mistake. And it's not a mistake. I mean, you, you just never know. They're like time know. bombs. They're, They're totally time bombs. unpredictable, totally unpredictable. And so we, we basically go to the, go to a nice, relatively nice. I mean, it's probably a family style uh, Italian place that we had in this new mall that had opened in Durham. And we, you know, we did the waiting and all that stuff, you know, probably about 15, 20 minutes waiting. And then we finally got a table and we sit down and Ash, not, we did not see each other throughout the entire <laughs> meal because we had to do the same thing. Julian refused to sit still. It was, it was impossible to keep him still. And so it was wandering around the restaurant and you're kind of dancing. Well, once you take, the, once you take him out of the high chair, you're it's done. game over. Game you're over. done. And it's a, and it's a, and it's a trade-off, right? You have to right. trade off between the kid throwing a fit, ruin everybody's dinner in the restaurant, right? Right. And, and, and you being looked upon as, oh my God, dude, really, we were trying to get a nice, we're, we're trying to leave the kids at home with a babysitter and you can't get a babysitter and, and right. you're, right? I mean, I get it. And so we had the same experience. And so the whole meal, Natalie will never forget that meal because she always reminds me of the meal. Every time we go to a restaurant, we see, you know, parents and kids and especially the toddlers. You um, see us. <laughs> well, exactly. But I've been there. That's the funny thing about it. That I get, I get it. So, so I guess the question for those listening is what's your solution, right? right? So the one and obvious one is get a babysitter. Right. Right. I mean, listen, the reality about it is that when you're two years old, I, I can't remember things when I was two years old. I mean, right. maybe, maybe there are images that I do remember, but who cares if you I can't stay- rationalize with a toddler. And that's the thing. I mean, we, I, I will, I will back that up because we did buy ourselves like 15 minutes because I ordered a gelato Sunday and I didn't, I thought this was going to be like a couple of scoops of ice cream. This was something from like an ice cream parlor. <laughs> her face, you should, cause I Lit usually up. don't, I don't give her sweets often. It's not that it's a, it's not that I, I try that's... not to. Yeah. I just, it's one of those things. I have a huge, huge sweet tooth. And so I really don't want to bring her up that way and so it's genetic she's gonna be that way but her face lit up you should she had she just had her hands on the table and kept (laughs) opening her mouth for me to feed her a bite like she I mean it was funny and so that bought me 15 minutes yeah but what it did it it is it fueled the fire right right what it does it gives her the sugar high right and then now, now it's basically the energizer bunny that you're dealing with right I mean that (laughs) So as a solution, here's what I, so here's, I'll tell you one thing, and it's odd that maybe you, you grow accustomed to this, that type of lifestyle, I would say, to be with your toddler and go to places that, you know, are usually kid friendly. And, and so unless you really get into, get a babysitter, then what are your other options? Okay. And, and I don't know is, and again, I don't know if it's because we've lived the life for so long. You, when you even go out, you have to admit the only thing you, you and your husband will probably will talk about, it's about the kids. Right. I, I, I can't help it. Natalie and I will go on vacations. And even if we go on vacations by ourselves, we basically are talking, despite the fact that we're trying to get away from everything, including the kids, right? Right. We just talk about the kids all the time when we're talking about school, we're talking about girlfriend, we're talking about sports we're talking about you know the friends that they're they're you know they're they're hanging out with and the future and college and all this stuff I mean because your life basically is about that right Right. and you can't escape it but uh but here here's here's what I'll tell you one thing that that we did last night was we didn't go to a fancy restaurant because our friends have a thinks he, he's about five years old, maybe, yeah, probably five years old. They have a five-year-old child. They have a, a teenager, but they also have a very young uh, child also. And so, you know, you can't go to a restaurant with him because he's, he's a child, right? He's right. running around. So what we did is that we ended up going to Central Market just down the oh, street. Oh, fantastic. Right? And the nice thing is that they have an, a cafe, but they also have an outdoor seating area in the cafe with a with a big kid's playpen. I mean, they've got a kid's area, you know, a play yard, basically right. In, in right there by the cafe. 
And the cool thing about it was, it, number one, you can have a, a really well-priced good meal. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, I paid, I think it was nine bucks for, uh, for penne a la carbonara with chicken. And they and they serve it in some nice plates and they, and you're and you're outside and the yesterday the day was just gorgeous, right? It was absolutely pretty gorgeous. And then you go and before you sit down, you go to the wine section in Central Market, which by the way has a spectacular, spectacular number of wines out there. And you pay, you know, a really, really reasonable price. I mean, it's not like three times the cost if you go to a restaurant. Right. And you, you buy really good, whatever you would buy, let's say that you buy, and I'm just throwing a num- number out there, an $80 bottle of wine there at Central Market. Well, you know, it's going to cost you upwards in the, in the 250 range oh, yeah. to, to a restaurant. So you're, you're getting a good quality wine. You're buying a good quality wine. And you can sit down, and for a fraction of the price, you can sit down, have a nice meal. Yeah, there are kids running around, but everybody's in the same boat. And you know what? We had it. We had probably, you know, a bottle of wine. We sat down there. We had, we had a great conversation. We laughed out loud because everybody's being loud because everybody wants to, you know, they're with their kids and what's, but it wasn't obnoxious loud. It was just basically fun loud. Right. And everybody right. in the same boat. So I would, I would say that at this stage, unless you get a babysitter, you know, going to a closed door restaurant is a bear. Now, right. granted, with a two-year-old, you're still going to have to get up and walk around and make sure that they're okay and that they're doing the slides and all that stuff. But at least it's got an area where everybody sort of accepts that they're going to be kids running around. And it's not, you know, it's not onerous for everybody. You don't feel as guilty, I guess. That's, right. That, that's a key thing about it. And I mean, there were other kids crying in this restaurant. And I, we could have likely sat there and just dealt with it. But it's one of those things I'm too aware of it because oh, I, I don't want to ruin other people's meals. And again, I have to say... She is normally fit. We take her out to eat once a week because she's great when she goes. Yeah. It's just last night was not her night. <laughs> well, you know what? It ha- it's going to happen. And it's going to happen that they're going to get sick and all the other things that come with being a parent. And, you know, I, I honestly, I think that that's com- completely normal uh, right. to have. And so I, you know, I, 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 you're going through the phases. I laugh because it, 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 you know, you're going through phases. I've got three boys. The third one basically is, is, is on his own. Is on right. his own, right? I mean, the third one is like whatever. He's gonna, right. He's gonna grow up with the with with his friends and his brothers. That's it. We don't we don't pay that much attention to him. I mean, we do. <laughs> it's not that way, but but the, you know, you go through the first one, and you're and you're going carbon copy through what we we went. The first one is the special. It's it's not that they're any different with in regards to love. But they mean, you know, the first one is, is the first one. And, and this is where you commit all the ro- rookie mistakes. I right. Mean, this is where it is. And so, but then the second one, you're kind of a little bit more in tune. And the third one, it's like, okay, whatever. And, 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 and you don't, you're not as worried and anxious about things because right. you're already gone through it. And I think it's like everything in life. But, yeah. uh, but you're going to go through stages and, 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 you know, a lot of things with Olivia that, that I've, I've gone through, but you know, it's so great to see them grow. And, and, it, and now when they become teenagers is the next phase that you're like, Oh my God. Oh, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to think about okay, that. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's talk about being a teenager because I had something happen this week that I was like, huh, I'm going to write this one down. So, <laughs> so that, you know, I'll ask Ash on the weekend and, Oh, gosh. What her point of view is yeah, but listen, it, but it actually translates into being a parent, right? Which right, which nobody there's you know, mom and dad are probably sitting listening to the show and and looking at us and saying, yeah, you know what? I remember when you know they were toddlers and they were baby, how cute they were, you know, talking about us, right? Right. But we went we went through a similar phase. I mean, in terms of of the, or they went through a similar phase with with the same issues with going out to dinner and all that stuff. But when you make it the teenager, here's the thing. Okay. There is, there is such a rush of hormones. Okay. That we all went through, right? Right. You're, you're sounding a little sheepish on this. I one. am. I don't know okay. where you're going with this. So I'm like, Oh gosh, you're going to catch me on the fly, but I'm I guess that's your point. You on the fly, but I want, I want to listen. We're going to be genuine. We're going to talk. We agree that the show was going to be genuine. And yes. By, by the way, those listening, you're listening to genuine. I'm Gonzo. I'm here with my co-host Ash. We're talking about anything, everything. That's the beautiful thing about the show. But at the end of the day, we're genuine. So, um, so, so I was at a hockey tournament, and uh, uh, and and I was, you know, 
waiting. I think I was waiting for Julian to come out and Natalie and I were kind of talking and whatnot. And there's it, this tournament is just full of kids. I mean, right. from all over the country. And so I'm sitting there, I'm waiting. And this kid walks by me. Okay. Uh-huh. And I, and I so happened to kind of stare at him because, you know, <laughs> big, lanky teenage kid, just so, like any other kid that you see, but what was brutally on it, the uh, obvious about him yeah. was the fact that he had a big purple mark on his neck. No. Yes. Okay. Was now, he hit by a puck? Well, okay. So, that, <laughs> <laughs> so that is the first thing that comes to mind, right? Because you're in a hockey, hockey tournament. And so, right? So you're, right. you're basically thinking, okay, well, maybe he got hurt, right? It may be, right. But, you know, you got – these kids are wearing guards. I mean, the chances of a puck – hitting you on the in neck. the neck okay and, and you not, not being taking, carted off the field or off right, the not, ice not taking out your carotid artery in the process are are close to zero i mean yeah you can get with right this was not a puck hit okay okay this was clearly and obviously a hickey okay now <laughs> now it, it it made me think about it because so the first question today is why, right? Right. That, so let me ask you. I, I'm sure you're gonna. <laughs> I can see her right now. Have you ever have you ever had a hickey or, or had a hickey done to you or given a hickey? No, I can honestly say that. What? Nope. What? What? Like what? Okay. okay. Tonight. <laughs> have I you? you to go- well, yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have. I mean, it was, yes, well, that was one of the things growing up because, it, it, you know, and I, and I went through the whole experience of remembering my, the first time that I got a hickey and the first time that I gave a hickey. <laughs> you seriously never gave a hickey. You, so you've never taken Lance's neck and bruised it up? No. What, you, you sound, you sound like, I'm saying something like from, from Harris, a, a heresy or something like that. No. Okay. So I want you tonight or it doesn't have <laughs> you tonight. It could be in a minute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you, I, so anyway, so I, I thought about it and I was thinking about it and I remember vividly the first time that, and I remember exactly who it was. I'm not going to say the name today because it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> She's probably happily married and all that stuff. Right. But, but it, it, and I, you know, it wasn't my wife. My wife would actually kill me if I actually would mark her, wet, her neck. Literally. That's what I'm saying. I was just about to ask you, have you ever bruised up Natalie's? I mean. <laughs> no. I, and, I, and I could joke around with it and she automatically slaps me off of her, right? <laughs> but, but, uh, but, okay, so you've never given a hickey to Lance? No. And nobody. And I don't given- plan on it. Okay, you got to live life here, girl. I mean, this whole business. I don't how- define living life as if by the amount of hickeys that I get. Okay, well, <laughs> you're missing out on something, okay? Because okay. It, you can check that one off the box. And it's about living, baby. I mean, we talked about the one. You should put that on the 100th thing that you want to do before you die. Give Lance a hickey. Put that on the list, okay? And get it okay. over with. Just put it I'll, I'll just humor you and tell you that I did. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So, so it made me think about why is it that people give hickeys or receive hickeys? Because the first thing is that is it, that if it's on the neck, which is usually, I should say, I have to assume it's the most common place that they put a, put a hickey on, right? Right. It's the neck. Now, there may be other places. I remember, I remember we, you know, we would joke around and even do it on our, ourselves on our arms just to show you what a hickey would look like. Right. Like, I mean, I remember on my forearm, I would, I would suck on my forearms and then all of a sudden it would get bruised. And I said, you see, that's, that's what a hickey looks like for those that didn't know what a hickey was back in right. the day. But the only reason that I, I, I mean, I could think it's a badge of honor, right? <laughs> It's, got, it's, it's the only, it's the only reason that you do it. it right. It, you know, I mean, it, I do remember that. Right. If you had it, if you had it, that, that showed somebody, maybe everybody 
that you're in a sexual relationship with somebody. Right. Okay. So uh, that was, or, or near sexual relationship was, or I don't know what you were trying to define. I mean, I'm thinking that you're trying to just prove that you're sucking face with somebody. Right. That was the only reason that you did it. Right. And at the, and at the tender age of 15 and 16, I guess that that's, you know, you want to prove that, you know, Hey, you know, uh, uh, yeah. Right. And, 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 and even the, a little bit of embarrassment is worth the talk about you because people are going to say, did you see the hickey on, on this person or that, you know, you're going right. out there and showing off that area. Now, the curious thing about it was, and now I can't talk to you about it. I'm going to have to talk by myself about this is <laughs> how, how did you deal with it? I mean, okay, so let me ask you this. You didn't have a hit. Oh, I had friends. You never, and, okay, so let's talk through that. So okay. what was the common remedy for that? Wear their hair down and hope that no one noticed. Or, or, or you know, or wear uh, a... Makeup a, over it. Yeah, exactly, right? Okay, so, so common, common things that you would do to, to cover your hickey if you were a girl were basically what you just pointed out. You, you basically brush your hair over it. If you had long hair, you could cover it up with your hair, which never worked, but at some point the wind would blow or you change your, your neck in some certain direction. Right. And that would obviously, you know, change it. Wear makeup over it. I remember some girls uh, just taking, what is it that you wear on your face? The base or foundation. The foundation. They would actually rub it on their neck. The problem was that they had, that you never wore foundation on your neck. Neck. <laughs> and unless it was something really, really subtle that you could actually, you know, disguise as your own skin, it was obvious that you were trying to hide something in your neck. And the, and the marks were usually that big and that, right. that purple that they would go through, you know, any makeup or any base that you would have. Um, I guess in the United States, we didn't have that, 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 you know, that advantage that we could use turtlenecks because we were in Puerto Rico and it was warm as hell. <laughs> right. So it's not like we could use turtlenecks, but turtlenecks were the other things, except that depending on the time of year, you would look weird and ri definitely raise the question as to what's going right. on that you're wearing a turtleneck, right? Right. I, so here's, here's an interesting fact that we used to use, or we used to say that work to try to remove the, uh, the hickey or a hickey was a cork take a cork really i don't know why I, it was the stupidest thing if you, i think people would just make up stuff and be like oh it works yeah and they would take a cork and burn it and once it was cool that is charred if you would rub it on your on your <laughs> picky it would actually make it go away well i would think that that would rush your neck up more <laughs> exactly right and so i'm like i was thinking about that and, and, and said to myself boy were we stupid back then i mean so I'm still that or gullible. <laughs> well, and, and, and the reason that all these these thoughts came back was the mere fact that I saw this kid who had a love bite, you know, the size of Dracula's mouth on his <laughs> neck. And it wasn't a puck injury. I can tell you that. I mean, right. Let me say that old man here has seen enough hickeys and done a couple of hickeys in his lifetime. <laughs> that I, I know what they look like, you know? Right. But, uh, but so, I, but, but I was actually curious as to asking you common, common things that you would do or not you, because clearly you haven't lived life, baby. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but those are the things that are happening when you're a teenager. And, 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 and let me, so counseling your kids, as to the right or wrong of that. That's what I was just about to say. What, do you, what are you going to do when Julian comes home with a hickey? Well, let me ask the same question to you. What, what is Lance going to do when, when actually Olivia shows up with a hickey? What would he do? Say we're homeschooling her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, listen, so, and, and the other thing, the, the th interesting thing about this conversation is that your reactions and the way that you're going to address your child is going to be maybe, I think it's going to be different based on the gender. Yeah, I, I was just about to say that. And it, I, hate to, I hate to say that, but it's, right? it's unfortunate. It's just true. There okay, are certain so let, things so that... Work, work with me with this situation, okay? Work okay. with me because this is, this is going to be potentially a real situation, right? And if right. you want to have a relationship with, your, with Olivia or any of your children, 
you got to be open, frank, right, about these types of things because what do you tell them? All right. So so now I'm actually okay, baby. This not now. Ask this is surgery, right? When we go to surgery, we we look at the patient's chart, we look at the X-rays, we put a plan in place, and we execute it so that way we get a zero percent mortality or a one percent mortality in the particular risk associated to the case, right? Right. So you prepare. We don't do that same thing as well with other things in life, right? Right. And maybe it's because it's a much more controlled situation. There's variables that you control. But there are, there are obvious things that the kids are going to go through, right, and people go through that we don't prepare ourselves very well for. And maybe some people do plan it. I'm basically kind of trying to figure it out as we go along. But your first one is going to give you the headaches, okay? Right. The and, first one's going to set the tone. <laughs> and, the, and the third one is going to get away with murder. Right. The third one's going to be learn. teaching everyone how yeah, to get exactly. pictures. <laughs> so let's, let's talk through this situation. So, so you've got now Olivia. She's a teenager. What, so what's the, so she, she shows up with a hickey, okay? All right? And I know this is unfathomable right now. Okay? I get it. All right? I, and you see this, this, this child will, but listen, we were that way once, Okay? And, right. and the only reason that I'm talking to you today is that I got away with a lot of stuff and I was in part lucky too. Okay. <laughs> right. Where are you in the birth order? Are you the oldest, youngest? I'm the oldest one. I, okay. I got the brunt of everything. Yeah, I, did, I you, too. I'm the oldest I, as well. I had a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, so what, what's the conversation? What are you going to, oh, Okay, let's take Olivia out of the picture. Let's assume that somebody else is actually, Olivia now is 16 and a friend of her shows up at home with a big, big hickey, okay? And you're uh-huh. like, I can't believe that, okay? What's, what, what, talk, talk to me about what conversation you would have with Olivia. Oh, gosh. Um, I ask her, hey, do you know what happened? Because for all I know, she, I don't, I don't, I don't even know. I like, I'm back. I'm sitting here. I'm like, what would I do? Well, but, but, but this, this is a real life situation, right? Right. Because it's going to happen. I mean, so, so I'll tell you what, you know, and maybe it's because i when, when I was growing up. Now, like, if she came home with one, the first thing I'd say is wait till your father gets home. <laughs> right. And because I'm not even going to have to handle this situation. Right, well, exactly. You all, all of a sudden lateralize the, 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 the what is it? The, uh, oh my God, I'm blanking the, out on the way. The, the punishment the, to, to the guy right. who's actually going to be the punisher, right? And right. you're going to be like, I'm, you, you think I'm mad? Which you, right. Just wait. Right? I, I could see this going on this way, right? Right. Um, so, so and, and one of the advices one of the advice that I'm going to give you is that tell her not to give up the name of the, of the guy who gave her. <laughs> right. That, I'm going to be like, get in my because, bathroom and go get some makeup. <laughs> and you wear your hair down for the next three days and don't let me see a mark like that on your neck again. Okay. This well, is that, your one get out of jail free card. No. But you know what? That's being a great mom. Okay. So what I, what I would, you know, as a father of a boy, okay, three boys, or a three boys, you know, First of all, I I think I laugh. Right. right? I probably say <laughs> you'd high five him. <laughs> well, well, it's not even high five. I don't know that I'll high five him because there, I have to be careful because at one point you have to be a parent. I mean, the first thing is right. you got to be a parent. And, right. and so I I I think that I'd use that as a segue to talk about sex in general. I was just about to say that. Okay, that's the door that they open to talk about sex. Right. And so I probably would. I probably would, and I thought this through, I probably would say, okay, that's a good one, huh? Or if it's a small one, I'd say, oh, come on, really? You think that's a hickey, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but, but it, I think it's where it, get, it it's how do you take that situation and turn it into an opportunity to teach your kids what's right and wrong? Right. So, and how to, and being responsible. Being responsible. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. So, you know, and and I'm not going to sit down here and tell you that I believe that people should be virgins all the way up to the day they're married. I mean, I think that that, that's, that's, I it's a very high bar to set, especially for teenagers and 
Well, and it worked out back in the day when you believe right. you're going to hell for every damn thing that you're going to look at. Right. I mean, listen, we've got, a, we've got on the show, we've got a, a topic about women's underwear at some point, okay? Right. <laughs> I mean, think about back, back in the day when my mom was growing up and my mom's close to 70, dad is, is 90, just like yours, okay? What, or your grandfather. Right. Let me, let me tell you, all these conversations that we're having op- out in the open about sex and gender and underwear and sec- sexiness and, and all these things were heresy back then. Oh, I mean, absolutely. And, 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 in a, and particularly in a Catholic abiding community as it was in Puerto Rico, God forbid, let me tell you, I showed up with a hickey. The time that I did show up, which I, I showed up the hickey with a hickey a couple of times in my household, it was, it, I had to hide it from my mother, not because I was embarrassed, but because I was afraid of what that woman would do to me. Right. Okay. She was a staunch, I mean, she would, but. She put the fear of God in you. Are you kidding me? That was, <laughs> that was, that was reality about it. So, but what I think I would do, and I would take the opportunity with the boys is to talk to them about exactly, you know, what that means, why they're doing it. And, and the advice is, you know what? Nobody needs to know. Right. At the end of the day, if you're having sex with somebody and you're making whatever, okay? And I don't want them to have sex at the age of 16. I am not saying that. I was about to say. <laughs> okay. But moving forward, if he ever does have sex, you know, and he will, right? I think he will, or they will in the future. Okay. Which is totally normal. All right. People don't need to know about it. Now right. that I'm adamant about. And the privacy of a relationship, there are things that are meant to be public, love, but certain expressions of love should be private. And it is the most it is the most public display of 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 whatever is it that you're doing that screams out sex to everybody in a time in which you shouldn't be even worrying about that type of stuff. Right. Okay. Now, I lost my train of thought because I was thinking about, you know, how do, how do you take it to the next level? I mean, the reality about it is that you just have to be careful. Oh, and, 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 I, and the other thing that I think I would tell my kids was that, first of all, think about you and that girl that you have a child and a girl. If she shows up and her mother or father see that thing, what do you think they're going to do to you? Right. And, 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 and I think that that's going to hit home because all of a sudden you've breached trust, mm-hmm. right? At this age, and we sh- you should be very careful. So, right. but, but at the same time, you got to be fair with them because you know what? They're going through a time in their lives, which we all went through, which hormones are just bas- basically going 100 miles an hour. They're discovering a lot of things. Right about their bodies and their feelings and their emotions. And you want to continue to encourage that conversation. Absolutely. Because the last thing you want to do is have them shut off and feel like they can't come to you or they have to hide everything from you. That's the, that would be my biggest fear, especially raising a girl. Is yeah. that I don't want her going to other people, her friends seeking out advice from them because she's afraid to come to me. That's the last thing I want to do. And, and, I got I'm sure, even, even, and I'm sure you and Natalie feel the same way with the boys. Like you want them to feel like they can approach you um, with some of these topics that might not be so easy. Right. And so I, I honestly, again, I honestly think that the, the balance that you have to strike as a parent, I don't, I, I told, I don't subscribe to being completely, you know, rigid and and controlling and you know ultra controlling with them i mean to a certain degree you got to let them grow and find their way and you know there's things that you can't control like you know like hormones okay right but but i think that for me and this is again my personal opinion about raising my boys is that i i want to be not only a dad but i want to give them enough trust that when they face certain situations I, yeah, and I tell this to, to the boys, I said, anything happens before anything, you call me, right? You call me because you know, it'll, it'll be like, like that scene from, uh, 
from Pulp Fiction, which the guy shows up and not that I'm going to dispose of a dead body. Okay. Not, I'm not also saying that, but you're going <laughs> to do everything to help your kid. And so, you know, you want to be the first one to know so that you can give them advice. And basically you can be part of the solution rather than taking on the solution by themselves, which I think right. is, is a much more healthier thing to do than, than basically, yeah, you can still put them in the rooms and tell them that you're, you're cutting off their, their, their money from their trust fund or whatever. You can still do all those things. But, at the, but the first thing is making sure that they're going to be okay and that they see that you love them and, and no matter what, you're going to support them and, and go through them with the same problems that they're going through. Right. So, so get prepared because there'll be the day and it's going to come sooner rather than later, okay, when she's a teenager right. and somebody's going to show up with a love bite and you're going to say, <laughs> oh, dear, what Which are is- you going to tell <laughs> Olivia? <laughs> uh well, it's thankfully, no, I don't have to worry about that for a while. <laughs> and you, so you're listening to Genuine. It's, this is Gonzo, and uh, here, I'm here with my co-host, Ash. Another interesting thing that came out this week, which I forwarded to you, with this whole business about the Wall Street Journal. And, and I, I, this is not an ad for the Wall Street Journal. I do like, I am a subscriber to the Wall Street Journal. And, and the reason I like the Wall Street Journal is that it doesn't only talk about money. Um, right. But it talks about everything and anything that has oh, to from the politics world. to it, lifestyle to it's really well-rounded and so I, I, I a story there's always stories about lifestyle and and fashion that I kind of sort of find interesting uh and it probably is the, the 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 you know the sorbet that cleanses the palate from all the heavy stuff that are going out in the world with economy politics you know uh strategy and you know money and all that stuff and it was in the style fashion, this the style and fashion this week of the Wall Street Journal that I saw an article that I was like, I caught my eye. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to ask Ash this question and I'm going to, I'm going to send her this and see what her feeling is about it. But it was an interesting article. It was written, written by, uh, I'm trying to find Lane Florshine, uh, who apparently is a writer for, uh, for the Wall Street Journal. And, and she writes, the title of the article says, we tried 101 pairs of everyday women's underwear and here are the best. So before we disclose the winners, or I disclose the winners, I wanted to, so fashion in, in the underwear business has gone from one end to another. And is, in, is it me? It seems that the pendulum is swinging a little bit more towards the center. Okay. Ash, I'm asking. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I... I think it is. Okay. Okay, because it, and it, and it's basically based on sales. And here's the article. It says, enthusiasm for the once ubiquitous thong rose through the 1990s and peaked in the mid-2000s. That's where I think the pendulum swung too far to the right. Okay. I mean, honestly, even, in, in, even at the beach, when we, went to, when we were in Puerto Rico, it swung to the thong side. Now, you know, there's a little bit of something leaving things to the imagination. Right. And it's actually kind of nice. Trust me. Okay. At, at least for me. I mean, and I, and I personally, I can't find that type of style of underwear being any, anywhere comfortable. You'd be wrong. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, it looks uncomfortable to me. Well, maybe, maybe it's just that I grew on the island and I saw so much of it that I was like, eh, I got it. Now, bathing suit with that thick material, that would be different. But when you're talking underwear, no. So- Really? Yeah. Huh. Well, here's an interesting fact. You may want to look into this and reconsider what you're doing. Okay. Because this past year, brief sales grew faster than those of thongs, according to the market research company, NDP Group. Okay. So, I can see. I mean, when I'm in stores, you're seeing a lot more. You're right. Swinging towards the middle because you see more options that are more of that. Um, fuller coverage i should say now and i don't know if it is a comfort thing that we've gone too much to the you know swung to the much more i don't know if it's right or provocative sexy whatever provocative and sexy and that that women now are finding it uncomfortable because let me tell you natalie if i ask natalie natalie you know will give me her opinion about this and i'm not going to say it out loud what her opinion is for those of you that know natalie you can ask her directly but (laughs) I, I will say that I personally have grown to appreciate more the brief style 
than right. than the thong style. Just because, it, just because, well, it's not because of comfort. I mean, it, I, I don't wear them. I, let me say it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But but it certainly does. I cut. I can see the argument that they're uncomfortable, and 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 so I can see why women are going more towards the brief, right? Right. And 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 I don't get. I honestly, I don't get the thong concept anymore. I, I, maybe I've grown mature and I've, I get it, you know, it's whatever, but or maybe I grew in an, on an Island that, you know, women were actually wearing that as bathing suits and like, okay, I get it. But, right. but it's not, it's not something that I find as attractive as, as I would say, if you look at somebody, a girl in, in briefs. And so I, I found it interesting that now it seems that the pendulum is swinging to the opposite side, but besides the fact that I have an opinion about it, do you have, do you have an opinion about it? I mean, do you prefer wearing something over than another thing? If like dresses or jeans or, or a particular time of the day? I'm like, I'll be honest. I'm more of the song. Cause I don't like underwear lines. I don't like okay. seeing underwear lines and jeans or when they ride up. No, it's like, it just, it keeps it simple. <laughs> but it doesn't, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother you like the jean material. I mean, I guess it shouldn't. No. Okay. Well, I honestly, and I'll tell you this because after, I mean, any woman who's had a baby knows that after you have a baby, you're definitely not wearing a thong. Um, and so you're wearing <laughs> those very grainy panties. And I remember thinking, I cannot wait until I, I felt like I was wearing a freaking diaper. And I was like, I cannot wait to be done with this. Well, you got the article. Did you look at some of the things that some of the companies that had actually women's underwear on it that, that seemed to be, I mean, reasonable in terms they weren't thongs actually and no yeah there's some definitely not thong but not granny panty um, right right yeah. i mean and so so i i'm gonna i'm gonna read out these and you can tell me did you have the article in front of you i'll pull it up as you start reading yeah okay so at the at the at the very end of the article it has three categories and they're divided into mass but not mundane unique uniquely indie and then you got hot H A U spell H A U T E yet habitable, which I found them interesting, and and they have photographs of it, and and then the mat in the first category of mass but not mundane. I guess what, when they refer to mass is the amount of cloth, right? That they have okay. or material, yeah. Yeah, the the winner of that category was Love by Gap Body Stretch Cotton Hipster, which they have a photograph of it and it looks and those are comfortable. Yeah. Then they have the third, the runner up on that was a, a brand called Commandos. And then yes. had Calvin Klein underwears, modern cotton bikini. I like the third one. I, I think that at least visually, I can see the, the, the attractiveness. And maybe it's just because Calvin Klein has done a beautiful job of branding my Calvins, you know, hashtag my Calvins right. out there. And, uh, and, it's, it, it, and there is a sexiness to it when you actually see the brand Calvin Klein, whether it's men's or women's. Uh, uh, you know, uh, underwear. But in any case, so those are the those are the top ones in the mass but not, not mundane category. The other one is uniquely indie. And uh, real quick, it's uh, base range classic bell pants was the 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 first one, and then Everlane and Botanica Workshop were the two runner ups. And then for the last category, which again were remind me of the eighties or nineties, the the cut that they show. Okay. Um, and it's hand row cotton seamless high brief cuts and you, and you see them and they look like the, uh, the, the bikini bottoms that they used to wear in the eighties and the not thong, but close to the high rise up to the hip. Right. And then, uh, Zimmerly, uh, and, uh, uh Arax, uh, Isabella bikini were the, uh, other ones. And they, they're much more of the nineties, uh, Kyle's cut style of brief. I found it interesting that the Wall Street Journal has a whole section on, on women's underwear, which, you know, the reason is it goes for sale. Okay. I uh, find it interesting that there are 101 different types of underwear, personally. Well, and, and, <laughs> and actually, if you read the article, she went through a lot of work, and I hope right. that she didn't buy all of them, because I hope that the companies actually gave up that just for them to, to for her to try. But but certainly, that, that was something interesting. You're listening to Genuine. This is Ash and Gons, uh, and you're listening to Genuine. Okay. A couple of four, a couple of more minutes before we uh, finish up the show, and I wanted to touch on on dying and and you know, it, dying is inevitable. 
Right. Okay. That, I mean, it's the reality that we are going to face one day. And I have to tell you, after turning my last birthday, I kind of sort of look at it in a, from a different angle than I did probably 10, 20 years ago. But, but I will say that um, I was watching Billions the other day. And you, you watch Billions, right? Yes, religiously. Oh, my God. It's, it's, it's a great, great show. And for those of you listening that haven't had the opportunity or haven't watched Billions, you're missing out on a great show. A oh. Great show. I mean, Damian Lewis, Maggie Siff, uh, Paul Malin Gim- Ackerman. Oh my! Paul God. Giamatti. It's such a. They could not have cast better people for this show. Like I say that every episode. I'm like, I don't know if they they knocked it out of the park with well, the cast. It, who's your favorite character? Um. Oh gosh, that's hard. it's either Damian Lewis or Paul Giamatti. Okay, my favorite can can. Uh, character or wags wags i mean forget i mean you can make a show. no filter i on that's that guy. exactly what it is and and i gotta tell you the the writers for the show are so smart it is it is such a great show i i gotta tell you i but i love david uh costable's character uh wags because it, it he is just brilliant i mean he is just funny smart like Ash said, no filter whatsoever. Well, he says the things that he knows everybody else is thinking, but wouldn't in a million years say out loud. Correct. And he says it. <laughs> Correct. And he says it in a very funny way. So, so when we're talking about dying, I, there was not, not this past Sunday, but the Sunday before, there was uh, uh, the, the episode was, was all about Wags trying to get this piece of land in a cemetery. Remember? Right, because, trying to get because, his plot. Right, he wanted to try, because it was his legacy. He wanted to get a plot of land, and he was trying to buy this lawyer out uh, for this piece of land, and he finally gets it. But at the end of the show, they basically, they meaning Damien Lewis, and he, Damien Lewis <clears throat> is playing this billionaire called Bobby Axelrod, and Wags, or, and Wags is the second in command in this hedge fund that uh, Bobby Axelrod or, or the actor Damien uh, Lewis is playing. Um, and David Constable is, is Wags, uh, his second in command. And they're sitting there looking at the, uh, looking at the parcel of land. And, and, and they go through this moment of kind of reflection, which to me was incredibly interesting. But, but, but Wags articulated something about dying that it was so real and so honest and so true. So true. That's what I was because I looked at my husband. I was like, "That is so true." Like I, working in a hospital, you you witness death, and I remember saying these same phrases depending upon the age. <laughs> it, it was it was beautiful, and so I'm I'm going to set the the viewers for what happened. And it's not a spoiler alert. It's actually a great scene, and and you can watch it um, on on Showtime. But but Wags and, and 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 Bobby are standing in front of that, and they're going through this conversation about why why is uh, why did Wags buy this plot of land? And I had to go back and and listen to it and and write it down because it was such a great such a great uh, exchange of ideas and and conversation. So you know, uh, Bobby Axelrod, the billionaire, says to Wags, says, "Well, you know what? I thought all this was was vanity, but now I understand that it's something to do with legacy." Wags retorts, some people front load to establish their legacy early in life. I left mine to the end, meaning the legacy of his parcel of land right. in, in the middle of Manhattan. Uh, and then he says, well, or maybe for the middle. Um, and, then, and then they go back and forth because there's a death in the show uh, that really affected the characters in the show. Uh, and this person died in their 30s. And then Bobby retorts something, boy, you know, uh, uh, this person died. He was 33. That, that's, just, uh, that's just incredibly sad. And then Wags retort, no, dying in your 30s is tragic, mm-hmm. as is your 40s. He follows by saying, sympathy dissipates from there. <laughs> Would you just have to laugh because it's, you just, you, you're it just curious so as to what's about to come out of his mouth next. But it's next. so true. It is. Sympathy dissipates after your 40s. What, what if you die? And then he continues in this uh-huh. solo <laughs> comment. He says, if you die in your 50s, it's such a shame. 60s is too soon. 
70s is a good run. And then 80s is a life well lived. But then he says 90s and Bobby Axel Rod retorts, that's a fucking hell of a ride. <laughs> yeah. And I just, I sat up, I was like, that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> so that was... That was that was the end of Billions, uh, not this past Sunday, the, the Sunday before, but it is a great show for those of you guys listening. If you haven't had a chance to, to tune in on it, make sure Definitely that you watch do. it because it's a great show and, and it's so fun to watch it. And, and uh, I'm going to say that it's probably one of the best shows that are out there right now in television. So Absolutely. if you have a chance of looking at it, listen to it. Uh, we're at the end of the show. Uh, again, thanks everybody for listening and joining in and uh, leaving your comments. We really do appreciate the time that you take of your Saturday to listen to us talk here at, uh, at Genuine. Uh, Ash, why don't you take it away from this point? I hope everyone has a great weekend. Thanks again for uh, choosing to spend part of your morning with us. And we look forward to having you back again next week on Genuine with Ash and Gonzo. Signing out. Gonzo, too. Take care. and See you guys next week. Bye. Bye.